Ni hao, wish us Um, This is an experiment in the making for the uh, listener and viewer feedback right now. I'm recording this both on audio and visual form. I just pointed at the wrong time in the video. Ah! See, I told you this was new. This is being recorded on both video and odd format right now, and my com my phone is doing some weird time lapse stuff. Wah! Oh, interesting. Okay, um, anyway, reason why I'm doing this is that my podcast has started to incorporate a language segment uh, where I both talk about my language learning experiences as well as highlighting other people who are using the Chinese language uh, to for some other purpose, for some other communicative purpose. So basically showing the beginning process via my stumbling through the language, learning to read in a Ch simplified Mandarin Chinese, and showing other folks who've gotten way past that and are using the language for some bigger communicative purpose. So what I wanted to do is since um, I've been asking for more feedback on the YouTube channel, uh, some folks sent me some questions. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, I wanted to put like pull those questions into the podcast as well. So I'm double dutying these two questions. That sounds really like a pile of crap, but uh, dutying, okay, okay yeah, never mind. It's a bad, like, childhood English word, duty, duty, doo doo, duty is like um, fecal matter in English. Anyway, that is not the language I want to talk about right now. <laughs> edit, edit, edit. Okay, um, I'm not going to because I, I, life, life is happening today and I need to get this done. So the reason why, YouTubers, the reason why you're seeing me with the headset is it's being recorded for my podcast too on my laptop, which is right here. So I'm going to be both looking at the audio f stuff to make sure it's going and looking at the questions that the YouTube folks sent me to answer for this part of the language segment in uh, both projects. <gasps> I used to pretend like these two projects could exist without infecting each other and it's just not possible. Anyway, if you're curious about the podcast or want to hear this on the podcast and Instagram channel, please follow in the links below that YouTube folks or the podcast folks. You still have lots of notes in the show notes for you. So everybody has notes. I take a lot of notes. Questions. This is a part about questions. So you guys asking me questions about my language learning. Two questions today in this segment of and video. Man, this is hard. <laughs> okay. Von Zeno asks, do you experience overload or burnout when studying? There's one, two, three questions. So I'll answer them one at a time. Uh, Von Zeno, yes, daily. No, not daily, because I, I don't do that much on a single day anymore. Um, but I do experience burnout. Uh, I experience burnout, I would say, at least on a weekly basis. Um, usually from frustration of not being able to progress faster than I am. Uh, I have been doing this since April of last year, and although I feel like I am, on the most part, progressing, although it's forward, back, forward, back, but I feel like I'm making... Uh, progress, but it's much, much less than where I want it to be because I'm doing it part-time and I have a dual goal of making materials and studying materials. So uh, I, I get very easily distracted by other people's language learning materials because I start to brainstorm what I could do as well to help other folks learning, beginning to learn China, um, simplified Mandarin Chinese and uh, also English, is, which is what I used to teach in a classroom setting. So I get easily distracted and there's a lot of life happening. I am a geopat, which is a kind of expat, um, living in China and I have a full-time job and a lovely husband and we just moved last week and this is especially bumpy ride the past couple of weeks as far as keeping going. Um, and burnout happens to me a lot because I see people around me using non-native speakers, using the language fluently. I, um, I see native speakers using the language fluently. I see people functioning in the language every day and it frustrates me that I can't do that yet. Although my goal is reading, I still get frustrated <sighs> that I can't read what's around me. Like I'm staring at a sign right now across the street and it says Shanghai something open. But it looks like a business building. The heck is open? Obviously the Kai character that I know is probably not Kai. It's probably connected to the character before it and it means something else. It's clearly an office building. The logo looks like it's maybe an insurance company, but I'm viewing that from a Western lens. But I can't read that. And it's a building right across the street from me. That's frustrating. I'm very, very easily frustrated that I can't 
get to where I want to be now. And that's where most of my burnout comes out. I could study the language on a daily basis for two or three hours a day and find infinite amount of interesting stuff. And I don't think that's where my burnout comes. I know a lot of people can burn out that way. I find that stuff really, really fascinating, which is new for me because that used to be my frustration point, I think. Um, but now since I've entered the language in a different way that feeds my soul, um, that sounds so corny, but it's true. Um, I don't so much experience burnout that way. I experience burnout through frustration of not being able to do more sooner. And I try to put that aside and keep going anyway. Um, second question from Bonzino. If you do, how are you handling it? I try to ignore my frustration and keep going anyway. I try to quantify the tasks I'm doing. Um, like the Lightner box on some previous videos that I have on the YouTube channel, a, a lot of previous videos. As most of the videos that I've made lately are about the Lightness bo Lightner box. Um, trying to quantify how much I'm doing on a daily basis so that I do the task, not so much focused on being able to read everything around me and not being able to read the newspapers yet. I try to quantify what I'm doing so I can see numeric progress in the words that I'm learning right now. It's the only thing I know. It's the only reason I switched from how I was learning in sentence form in a really, really good book that I was using um, for learning to read Chinese. Uh, I switched from that to words because it was overwhelming to read those sentences. Even though they had the vocabulary uh, laid out in a really, really manageable way, it was still so much, it was too overwhelming. Whereas 150 words for HSK1 and going through those words in the systematic approach that the Lightner Box does is much more manageable for me. So uh, I try to put my frustration over there and keep going with that process. So I had to actually, for me, I had to find a method that split the task up into manageable bits so that I could have uh, essentially a bunch of mini successes along with the failures. And it's the only way I could keep going. Uh, learning to read in Chinese, because I'm trying not to rely on the pinyin, although I do use it for pronunciation practice, of course, to look at until I know the, the pronunciation. I do look at it, I do use it, but I don't want to rely on it because I want to read in Chinese. I want the meaning and the images of the meanings and all that kind of stuff to be the most prevalent part when I look at the Hansa characters. So for me, I needed to break it up into such incredibly tiny bits. And so far the Lightner Box is really, really stroking that need. The frustration keeps coming, but I keep trying to put it over there. I'm trying to put the, the kid in the corner, so to speak, because <laughs> I am the kid in the corner. I am my worst enemy when it comes to language learning. Uh, last question from Vanzino. Uh, do you feel, oh, this is a good one, and do you feel that being immersed in the language, uh, parentheses, by living there, on um, parentheses, eh, uh, make it harder or easier to overcome the burnout? Harder! Much harder. Um, I know every, a, a lot of people say that immersion is best. I don't think, I don't, I don't think that. Um, I agree with Ollie Richards on this, uh, How to Learn a Language podcast, and I believe he also has a website, and I'm a huge fan of Ollie. Um, he says after a certain point, like basically intermediate level, immersion can be really helpful. But at the beginning stages, it's insanely overwhelming. And because my frustration comes from not being able to use the language as far as reading goes, I'm still pointing to the sign across the street, I find that having so much language around me all the time, although it can be really fun, especially when I'm doing the walkabout videos, it is incredibly frustrating because I can't read the vast majority of things around me. And I'm a reader. I have to read every sign as I'm walking by it, which is one reason why I'm a super slow walker, is no matter what language is around me, I will sound it out and try to guess its meaning. Any country I'm in, any city I'm in, any context I'm in, I'm a reader. Um, I, until I absolutely positively lose my eyesight completely, I will do that. It's just what I've done my entire life. I used to read, like, packages. Oh, gosh, I just remembered this. When we were in the grocery store when I was a kid, I used to read package labels as I was walking by them. And I, I, yeah, I, I haven't thought of that. In, I don't even think I've ever really said that out loud or admitted that I did that. But I read constantly all the time and in an audible way in my head, if that makes any sense. So being immersed and it will be really useful later, but right now is really, really frustrating because the vast majority of stuff I cannot understand. Now, when I do understand stuff, 
uh, you'll see in my Instagram videos, the really brief Instagram videos, ah, there's a moment of, holy crap, I can't believe I understood that. Those moments are beautiful, but they are few and far between, and that's why they're on Instagram in 10 seconds versus an entire video of, I got it, moments, um, aha moments as I used to label them, because um, there's a lot less of them now, because I realize how much identifying components of words is much easier than identifying words. I still have space issues in Chinese because spacing is very, very different for going from English to Chinese. So I realize how much I probably guessed wrong before and I'm a little self-conscious and hesitant to do that now. And so it's more overwhelming to be here right now. Once I get past this and get to a certain stage, I'm guessing around end of HSK2, beginning of HSK3, when I get much more comfortable with words, then being here will accelerate my learning. But right now, as a very, very, very beginner, I, it's incredibly hard, incredibly hard. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say don't come if you wanna learn language. Again, I'm learning it part-time, uh, on the side, on and off, on and off, on and off, more on than off, but still on and off. So if you're coming here to learn from scratch and you go to university and study it for a year, or you're going to night classes and study it for a year or two years, you're gonna, that, that environment and the advantage of being immersed will be much more fruitful than my like half hour a day most days will be. Um, you'll get to that point where it's useful much quicker. And if your goal is speaking, then having that speaking practice ability every day, especially if you're outside of the tier one cities, will be much more useful. With my goals, right now at my level, it's really frustrating. But that's only a temporary state. For most of my language learning, it will be good that I'm here, um, if I'm still here by the time I get there. <laughs> it's all a mystery, right? Anyway, so I was going to go over both of the questions on the YouTube video, but we've already reached 12 minutes, and my, I'm trying to keep my podcast short, and I'm trying to keep my videos shorter than they have been lately. So I'm going to address the next question in the next video at slash podcast. So um, we'll see. I don't know how, how often I'm going to to do uh, co congruent projects, is that even the right word? Projects both on the YouTube channel and on the podcast itself, but I thought this was a, an opportune moment to bridge the two since this is the first time I'm doing the language segment on the podcast itself. Again, YouTubers, down below, you'll see the information for the podcast if you wanna check that out. And I, I do the time, so if you wanna just go to the language section, please feel free to do that. I think you might find the other bits interesting, but hey, you know, do what you want to do. For the podcast listeners, feel free to check out my YouTube video, especially those walkabout videos. Those are so much fun. Anyway, and I'll be doing more of those come spring when the pollution and temperatures are much more friendly to uh, my bare fingers outside, well, in my throat and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. More soon. Satyan.